But in the future, I plan on uh, rolling out uh, a, a large amount of solar yeah. and offsetting my bill that way. And then in the future, when I build my workshop, I'll be putting another tank in the workshop with more miners mm -hmm. on a separate power feed. And by doing that, I'll run radiant floors for heat and possibly even a snow melt system in the, uh, in the winter time. With your solar setup, would you, are you planning to have a battery? So I've gone back and forth on that at various stages. Obviously I, I lean more towards having an off grid setup, uh, as okay. opposed to a grid tie setup. So, uh, here where I'm at, we don't have a decent net metering plan. That is to say, uh, if I overproduce on my solar and try and push it back to the grid, they pay me pennies on the dollar for what I produce. So versus what I use. Yeah, so it's way more worth it for you to keep all of it. It's way more worth it for me to keep all of it. That said, currently with battery technology where it is, it's somewhat costly to install a large battery system. Yeah. And my, personally, my, my electrical needs are strange in that I have a large number of computers and mm -hmm. servers that, that do tasks for me. So I naturally have a high, very constant demand. Yeah. When I add the Bitcoin miners on top of that, that <laughs> that would do the same thing. So sizing a battery capable of running so many miners and mm -hmm. computers, it's probably out of my range. Yeah. But that said, I can take the same money that I would put into battery technology and overbuild my solar production capacity. Yeah. As long as I don't exceed what my miners and computers can use at any given moment, like during peak sun, mm -hmm. then I'm essentially running them on solar during peak sun. We've looked at wind, and the one problem we had was the inconsistencies of it. How do you, but you're also, obviously you're tied to the grid too, so how do you control the solar power powering the miners and the grid power? Yeah, so uh, the easy way to do that is by using an off-grid inverter in zero export mode, uh, such that you're basically running your utility power through your inverter and okay. feeding your loads from that. And then as the sun comes up and power starts to be produced, that's jointly feeding your loads with less and less grid power needed. So the inverter controls how much it's taking from the grid? Or how, so how does it actually work? So basically what you're doing is you're turning the DC from the panels into AC for your, for your loads. Yep. And AC will always flow to where it's needed. Uh, in the case of a grid tie inverter, that means uh, it'll flow back onto the grid to your neighbor's house to power his lights. If your inverter supports zero export, it will never send power oh. back to the grid. It will only ever take from the grid. Oh, interesting. Because that is, that is one, I guess, consideration we never had was how, how we're actually going to do that. Yeah. Because I think there's there are some guys that have, you know, a, a small scale, like they have a little windmill that we've seen on like Twitter or something. They had like a 12 kilowatt windmill, and then he just very briefly said that he... It was like, so how do you control it? He, did, he didn't really go into detail. So I would assume he he's using an inverter then. Um, 